Okay, hello, and welcome to our third video talking about MIDI uh, visualization with processing. So last time we just installed, um, or copied and pasted some of the code that I wrote uh, for managing that list of notes that we want to keep track of in our visualization, and that gave us a note manager uh, and also a note class. And the note is now the thing that we're going to look at. Um, we're going to teach processing what we want a note to look like and what we want a note to do. Uh, let's get right into that. This is basically just a stylistic thing, so you can sort of do whatever you want, but in this video, uh, I'll just do a demo uh, implementation of what the note class might look like. Uh, so first off, yeah, I want each note to have some kind of position. Uh, so I'm going to come up here in the fields that it has. It has channel, velocity, pitch, a lifespan, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, and then is released, which tells me if the note has been released already. Because we might want, even after the note has been released, we might want it to uh, stick around for a while, so we might want it to fade, and that's what the lifespan has to do with. Um, so but first, I'm just going to give it a uh, float, x and a y, and then I also would like it to have a size, so it, it needs to know what size to, uh, to display itself as. I'm just going to use an ellipse, uh, and what we're going to do is scale that size based on the velocity of the note that came in. I would also like it to have a random color, so I can create a color um, for it. Cool, so we're going to come down here, and in the constructor, I'm going to initialize all these things. So what I'm going to do, instead of randomizing the x and the y, I'm actually going to um, put them sort of in a line. So I'm going to put all the y's at the same value. That'll be height over 2. So just half of the, the window height. So they'll all be in the vertically centered. And then the x is going to be, I'm going to scale its pitch um, onto the size of the window. So if it's a really low note, it'll be over on the left of the window. If it's a really high note, it'll be on the right of the window. Um, yeah, that's how that's going to go. So the pitch is, the range for this keyboard, the lowest pitch here is 48, and the highest pitch is 84, uh, which you can figure out for your own keyboard uh, by using those, uh, those print statements in the note on and note off functions we were dealing with earlier. So I'm going to map the pitch from 48 to 84 onto the range 0 to width. That's the width of the window. So there we go. We have x value um, scaled onto the screen. For the size of the note, let's see, I would like to scale the velocity of the, the note coming in. So if it's a really hardly pressed note, it'll be a larger ellipse. If it's, uh, it's kind of softer, it'll be a smaller ellipse. So we can map the um, velocity. Oh. Velocity, and velocity, the range is 0 to 127, I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, but that should work for our purposes. Um, and I'll map it from there onto, let's say, the smallest size can be about 5. And the largest size can be about 100. Why not? Uh, that's pretty big. Um, cool. So we have a size of x and y, and then color. Let's just give each um, let's just give each note a random color. Uh, why not? So we can just say color, and then give it random 0 to 255 for all of the red, green, and blue arguments. That's what that's telling. It's a new color RGB. I'm just giving them all random values, so we create a random color. Cool. So we have an x and y, a size, and a color. Uh, I don't really want to use the update function. I'm not going to change anything. Like the position of the, the note isn't going to actually change after it's been initialized. It's just going to stay there. Uh, although you certainly could do that um, if you wanted to keep track of the position over time. Uh, but for the display, I will display it. So first I want to fill uh, this.color, right? Because I created that random color so I can color this specific note. Uh, and then I'll draw an ellipse. Let's do an ellipse at this.x, this.y. Uh, and it'll be this.size, y and this dot size tall. Cool, so there's my ellipse. So now the note knows where it is. It knows how big to draw itself as an ellipse. It knows what color it should be, and it knows how to display itself. Um, so this should be pretty good. Um, and let's see, let's go back to our main class. There are a couple things I didn't do in the first video, so I want to create an actual canvas. I'll just do that 700, 700, uh, and we'll make it a black background on our canvas, right? And then every time we draw, I'm going to say background zero. So I'll redraw the background every frame. Uh, and then, yeah, what we have, we have our note on with our adding of each note and releasing of each note. Um, oh, and one other thing. So the lifespan of the note. When that lifespan is really small, this is, uh, this is in frames. So this is how many frames after you release the note does it still uh, stick around. Uh, so if it's really small, like five, you're basically going to see it vanish as soon as you release the note. We can make it longer, like 50, um, if we wanted to increase that, uh, that lifespan. So now let's just run this to, uh, to give it a test and see what that looks like, uh, first off. So here's my window, and we see if I press a MIDI note, and I release it, it should go away after 50 frames, uh, and it's not doing much else. So we have 
appears, yeah, we've successfully scaled uh, the X position based on where it is on the keyboard. So I'm pressing high notes, and they're over here on the right of the window, and low notes are on the left of the window. Uh, and you see we have all the notes in between. And they're also based on how hard I press them, because if I press really hard, they should show up. But if I press really softly, they're very small. So that's nice. We could change those if we wanted. Um, but this gives us a pretty good, uh, pretty good visualization of, of the sort of music that's being played, right? Even though you can't hear anything, I apologize uh, for that. Um, but yeah, so we could definitely change things about this. One other thing that we might want to add um, that looks pretty cool is actually having the note sort of fade away instead of just dropping out when it's released. And the way we can do this is by using an alpha value uh, when we fill. So down here in fill, in the display uh, function of the note class, uh, we can give it another argument. So we can say fill this color, but also with this alpha value. And that tells you how transparent it should make the thing. Uh, so what we can do for the alpha value is we can scale the, uh, the lifespan of the note. And that will be from, let's see, it's currently at 50. So it'll start at 50 and go to 0. If we want to scale it from 50 to 0, um, we'll start at completely opaque. So we can see the entirety of the color of the ball down to zero. So that should work. It should map it, and I'm sorry, we need another parentheses. It should map it um, to be really opaque when it uh, first is released, and then the lifespan will tick down as, uh, as every frame is drawn after the releasing of the note. And as the lifespan gets to zero, the transparency should increase, and you should see less and less of the ball. So let's just try that out by running it again. So now when you hold down a note and then you release it, you can see that it sort of fades fades out instead of just kind of dropping away. And that can be nice because that looks a lot smoother, in my opinion, uh, than, than it previously did with everything else. So yeah, we have, um, we have sort of this visualization of what's going on uh, on our MIDI instrument. Um, there are so many expansions that you could do with this, really, that I'm not even going to list them because there's, there's really, it's endless. Um, you could just decide how you want to display each MIDI note. Um, and that's really all there is to it. You could do so much, though, uh, with, with changing the position of everything. Uh, so there are a lot of possibilities. I encourage you to explore uh, as many of them as you like. Uh, whatever sort of inspires you to, uh, to visualize um, the music that's being played, however you think it should appear visually to you, uh, you can implement that using the system. Uh, so it's, it's super uh, useful and, and expandable like that. Um, and I hope that you, you've learned more about how to uh, create these kind of graphics uh, with processing.